Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy, the greatest live broadcast on all of YouTube. What we do here on Getting Sketchy for you is we try to create a drawing inside of 45 minutes. Uh, so the drawing is going to be sketchy, but it should be fun. Um, and we also try to sprinkle in a little bit of entertainment and instruction along the way. Like always, I'm joined by my good friend, Ashley, who's sitting right over there. How are you doing this evening, Ashley? Doing great, Matt. Thank you for asking. I hope you folks are doing well also. It's good to be back with you. Um, I can't believe a week has already passed, but here we are again. Last week, I drew on black paper, and Matt's using black paper too. So hopefully you've got some left over and you can follow along tonight. Or just kick back and watch and uh, make comments in the chat. I'll be looking for them. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of the chat, if you are joining us live here on YouTube, there's a chat box. Of course, you can post comments and questions. If you do have a comment or question that's directed specifically at Ashley or I, we ask that you use the super chat function, which will uh, help out this channel, obviously. And it will get your comment or question prominently displayed amongst all of the other ones there in the chat box and will help us see it a little bit easier as well. Uh, hello to everyone from all over the world, New York City, Kentucky, Southeast Texas, North Wales, Michigan, Florida. We're glad to have all of you guys along with us. And those of you who are watching the recorded version of this sometime in the future, just because this is live right now doesn't mean that it's not gonna exist forever on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Now, before we go into tonight's uh, getting sketchy, I do need to share a little bit of a programming note with you. And I haven't even, I forgot to tell you this. I, I put it together. <laughs> I put it together. together uh, next week, we will not do getting sketchy or the live lesson. I will be unavailable next Wednesday. And I am leading in the current live lesson series, which is for members, which is our other live show that we do after this one. Um, and obviously, I won't be around for getting sketchy. Our next. Uh, episode and getting sketchy this is episode 10 of season 11 our next episode is going to be the review show where we look at all the pieces of artwork that we make this season or made this season and uh, we do a quick critique of those so that show will actually happen a week from wednesday i don't know the exact date but april it's the 10th april the 10th yeah. there you go so april the 10th will be our last getting sketchy episode of this season we'll take a few weeks off and then we'll come back um, so just a quick programming note there. And also, um, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel, of course, and uh, click the notification bell so you're notified when we go live like this and when I post some of the regular static videos that I like to do here too on YouTube. And uh, also, check out the membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which we're going to be broadcasting live at in uh, about a little over an hour. Mm -hmm. um, there you will find a variety of drawing and painting courses on pretty much any subject matter or media that you can imagine. We also do the weekly live lessons, as I mentioned, and all of those are recorded and stored in our vault. And all those lessons, I, I started streaming in 2012. So the live lessons go all the way back to then, uh, which that's a lot of videos. And there's weekly uh, critiques as part of the Members Minute. I think we're on episode 471 this week. So there's 470 recorded critiques of uh, students' artwork. And there is a complete curriculum, a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. So if you want to use the program to teach your students in the class that you teach, of course, that is available and part of the membership program. There's a link to the membership program below this video if you want to check it out. Everyone starts out with a trial for free, a week-long trial. And then beyond that, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. We want to make sure everybody is happy. And uh, I think most of the members are pretty happy. Um, so if you want to learn more about the program, there's a link in the description below. Also, if you want to be on our mailing list and get a bunch of free videos and also some free course videos and ebooks, there's a link in the description below for that as well. All right. Are we ready to go? I think that's it. I think that's everything. Yeah. Right. Just uh, so we still got folks coming in. So yeah. um, get your black paper out, get ready. And I think we'll go ahead and switch over and take a look at, talk about the reference a little bit. Yeah. Um, we like to do all that talking at the beginning to give give people time to get in here. But we can procrastinate lo no, uh, <laughs> no longer. It is time to get into this one. And uh, boy, this one should be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Oh. Uh, one more thing, I can procrastinate a little bit longer. Uh, it, the photo reference that I'm going to be using there is, uh, it is available to you at the community tab. 
uh, on the YouTube channel. So to get to the YouTube channel, you can click on my face in the lower left hand corner underneath the video, and that will take you to the YouTube channel. Look for the community tab there, and then the top post under the community tab will have a link back to this video and also the photo reference if you want to use it alongside me. We'll have it up on the screen, but since this is a horizontally formatted picture plane, uh, it's gonna be a little bit smaller than it would be if we were working with a horizontal format. All right, now we must go on, so I'm gonna go ahead and transition over. All right. Well, it's not a secret anymore what we're doing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be drawing a shark. And not just any shark. This is the great That's right. white shark up there. The dreaded great white king shark. Of, the king of the water jungle. The king of the water jungle. We completely made that up. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be working on black art again paper. And I think it's called art again because it's recycled paper. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that totally makes yeah. sense. It's a good. It's actually uh, good marketing. Yeah. Um, now the paper appears a little bit like a dark gray, uh, but that's because we got lights everywhere. Once the drawing is finished and photographed, uh, it will look black. Um, but uh, the photo that we're working from, I think. Now, don't quote me on this, but I think you're gonna you're gonna have something to say about this. But I think <laughs> that it is a uh, artificially intelligent okay. artificially intelligently made photo. image and how uh, dangerous was it to take but but let me let me i have edited this heavily mm -hmm. so i have taken the color out i have adjusted the values dramatically mm -hmm. from the original image there were all kinds of fish and stuff in the original image um but it something just didn't seem quite right about it so i'm i'm guessing that uh, a little bit of artificial intelligence was used here uh, to create this reference, but we're gonna turn it into a piece of art. Notice what I did there uh, so in, this, in this lesson. Um, so uh, there were some questions about the size of the paper that I'm using. Someone confidently answered, but that was not the correct, uh, the cor correct uh, dimensions here. It this close. is, it's close. Uh, I'm gonna be working 6.75 inches wide and four and a half inches tall. So 6.75 this away and 4.5 inches this away. And, that is proportional to the reference image or just about proportional. So that'll help me place our uh, baby shark right there. Um, and as far as the application materials, I'm gonna be using what I have left of my white charcoal. Now you guys are gonna get a kick out of this. Then we got my first pencil, my second pencil, <laughs> my third pencil, <laughs> my fourth pencil, well-loved pencils, and I have a fifth pencil here. Now, <laughs> this looks like an arrow tips. They're no bigger than arrow. To tips. compare, this is my hand. Okay, so uh, <laughs> um, I knew I had more white charcoal pencils. Um, I spent hours preparing but... <laughs> the reference, but didn't bother to order any or buy charcoal pencils. No, no, no. I, I'm, it's the time is coming clearly when I'm going to have to get some more white charcoal pencils. You got a birthday coming up? Um, get no, you? I don't. But. <laughs> Um, this, this is what's left of my charcoal pencils, but there's, that's no problem. I have, oh, my sixth pencil too, in my pencil holder. That I have one's ready to go. That one's ready to go. So I have these at my disposal and I have sharpened these with a blade and then a piece of sandpaper. Uh, if you're wondering, there is a video that I made on how to sharpen a pencil like a pro, and it covers all the different ways to sharpen pencils. I use all of the techniques that I show you in that video, but if you wanna learn more about this instead of taking time here, uh, go check out that video. All right, I'm gonna move all of these little guys off the paper here. <laughs> I'm also using a couple of erasers. I have my electric eraser here, uh, which I'll hold it up to the camera or the mic so you can hear that it actually like is electric. Um, and then I have my Tombow mono eraser. Both of these erasers have a vinyl eraser in them, so they can tear your paper, but uh, they're really great for precision erasing, which we'll need for this little small drawing. And I have a blending stump here. 
Um, I also have a blending tortilla, but I don't think I'm going to use that. I think I'm going to stick with the stump. And if you want to know the difference between a tortilla and a stump, well, you've got it right here. You, you can see that a stump is basically made up of like compressed paper and then sharpened to a point where a blending tortilla is actually rolled paper. And it might be hard to see. Rolled but, to a point. Right. Rolled hollow to a point. inside. Yep. All right. All right, so uh, let's get ready to get started here. I'm going to brush those little white bits into the paper. So we're going to be drawing with white charcoal before I start the timer. And uh, this is going to, and this is a paper towel um, to protect my hand from destroying the artwork. When we are applying a white material to a black surface, we have to kind of adjust the way our mind works since most of us are accustomed to adding dark material to a white surface or a toned surface um, in this case we're adding a white material to a black surface so the areas that we leave open are going to be the darker values uh, this is the opposite of what we do when we apply a dark material to a light surface we are adding the shadows and leaving the highlights so we're going to do that. Then we're going to do the reverse of that here. Um, I see the question of what goes into the decision and what mm -hmm. size to draw. Uh, a big part of that is the time frame. That's right. Uh, this has to be a small drawing for the medium that we're working with. Uh, not always with a, you know, uh, some of the, I think the largest drawings we've done this season, probably that landscape I did with charcoal. Which is still a pretty small drawing, uh, now, but in the live lessons, you know, we go oh, the live like lessons, 15, yeah, fifteen, sixteen inches, right? Yeah, live lessons are much larger, but but we don't have the time frame of forty five minutes right. with those. So, um, all right, so okay, I'm gonna have to turn on the timer now. It's begrudging. Time. It's time for the timer. Begrudgingly turning on the timer now. Forty-five minutes. All right, here we go. All right. All right. Let's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where my baby shark is, and the reason why I'm saying baby shark is because I wanted to get some shark music for the show tonight, but I had the fault earlier today, and then didn't do it. I I apologize. I probably shouldn't tell you that. But that's that's what happened. Um, so I wanted to, and and you know what? It's probably better because you know who knows what kind of copyright issues that would have well, caused. Well, Matt, you know? we can all hear Baby Shark in our heads now. So oh yeah, that's we don't that. even need the the actual music. Yeah, you don't even need. need oh, to. I'll carry that just, tune now into probably da, 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 tomorrow. Da, da. Yeah, and I'm going to try not to hum it to myself here. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to try to find the basic form or shape of the. Uh, the uh, shark here. The, the fuselage and, of the shark. And I'm drawing pretty lightly with the white charcoal. Now, I'm going to do all of this with white charcoal, so I'm not starting with graphite or anything like that. Um, and that's because this is going to be pretty easy to manipulate on the surface. So we can be pretty sketchy and actually start the drawing like we would if we were drawing on a uh, white surface with black paper. So I'm just basically, again, kind of thinking about shapes and how I can break this oversized sardine down into basic shapes. Love the scale relationships between the fins and the foreshortening. It's really cool. Yeah, and uh, I like that the the fins are, these tail fins especially, are in shadow. Mm -hmm. And they're like... It's carved out from it's the It's carved out, yes from the light around it. And we're gonna do that in our drawing too. Now also this has a, the shark has a very long fin coming way out here close to the edge of the pitcher plane. And that's because of how it's positioned in the water. So we'll just kind of get an idea of where that is. And then we'll continue down with the bottom portion of this fin. And see, it disappears kind of up there underneath that long fin. Then we have another little piece that kind of cuts back. Now, you mentioned that this uh, reference, you believe, was generated? I don't know that for oh, okay. certain. So you didn't generate it? I did not generate that's it, no. I, that's what I was wondering, if you used your own No, but first. I don't think, there. there's something about the original image. Um, this is from Pixabay. The original, it would... 
you know, if you saw the original image, it would kind of be hard to, to, to say that this was from that. But the original image uh, did look something wasn't right, you know? Yeah, and that is uh, one of the, you know, we still have some telltale signs of imagery that's created with AI versus with a, with a person. Of course, there's, you know, we want to talk about maybe mistakes in the art that's generated by a computer, but there's always are often some mistakes that are, can be endearing that are in art that's generated from just a person's mind or, you know, photographic references too. There is something they seem to have in common still. Okay, so where I'm figuring out where this dorsal fin is located mm -hmm. is I'm looking at where this uh, fin, which is actually on the other side of the shark, comes up, and it kind of comes up right before this one starts. It's so looking and at the so, relationship of se of parts that are separated from one another. That's right. Important. Once important you get to start to do, yeah. Once you figure out a place to start, that is where your first um, comparison point is going to be. All right, and so in my we'll own classroom, figure Matt, out where the eye is. In, um, Photoshop. Uh, well, of course, in the digital art class, we use it a lot, but we've been using the new generative AI feature in Photoshop. And it's been fun and interesting to learn where it can um, assist us with our artwork, our projects. A lot of this is design work. Um, and also where its shortcomings are. And, uh, you know, I've, I've found that at least the Adobe's generative AI, it does a fantastic job um, creating or adding to backgrounds and nature. It struggles some with animals and it struggles a lot with people. So there's, a, you know, there's room for improvement there. I'm sure we'll see that rolled out in the uh, subsequent updates. Um, but it's been, it's been a fun, a fun year um, to, to incorporate and try and, and I mean that, you know, to incorporate AI in with uh, what we're actually doing with our hands, kind of bringing them together. I don't, it's not really mixed media. It's kind of mixed process. And I think that's going to be the way to go in the future. All right. So now we've got the basic uh, idea of where a shark's going to be located. Now let's go ahead and let's see. Let's go ahead and put some of this water jazz up here. Yeah, those are pretty pretty white marks. You can't go wrong up there. Yeah, they're pretty value. pretty light. Although they're I'm we're, they're going to be we're going to put them on the surface and then we're going to let them be a little bit less intense once we do some blending. So we're going to go okay. pretty quick with with this here and then we'll come back and refine it later. So uh, we're just, just you remember that charcoal is pretty forgiving as a medium. A lot of people forget that uh, or think that charcoal is is pretty difficult to control and messy and all that. But it's it's messy and difficult to control because it's forgiving. Right. It's, I mean, it, you know, uh, some of my students sometimes are shy away from charcoal or white charcoal in this like in this case, uh, because they say it smears easy. And I say, yeah, I know, but it's great because it smears easy. Right. So it's that it's that quality that can make it hard hard to work with or easy to work with. It just depends on your framing. And I, I love media that gives me a chance to make changes. So I like to sculpt in clay. I like to draw with pencils, and I like to draw with charcoal for the very same reason. It's, it's forgiving in that um, you can make pretty fast and easy changes. Okay. So we're going to put some of these rays coming down here. Mm -hmm, a beautiful light. And this is going to look pretty. Pretty uh, rough here for a little while. And um, then as we blend and erase, it's going to become more refined. So that's where the drawing's really going to come together. Right now, we're just getting some white material yeah, on the get, surface. Just gets the material where you need it, then you can work with it. And a generalized location, too. You don't have to overthink it too much. Man, looks like we can see the water off in the distance here. It looks scary. I, I made this. The believe it or not, the original image looked a lot. It looked too friendly. <laughs> it didn't look scary enough. 
So I made it a lot scarier. So you, you up the contrast on it? Oh yeah. And it made a lot of a lot of darkness in there. That was my son and I were at a restaurant um recently in, in our town, Matt, and it had this huge um image on the wall. It's like like a mascot, like a logo that was a person, like a chef, you know. It was cartoonish. Yeah. And uh we sat down to eat and my son immediately said, That's that's AI art. And I looked back at it and he was very quick to pick it out as having been artificially generated. Um, the, because the, uh, the chef, you know, it was a cartoon of a cartoon image of a chef mm -hmm. uh, was holding a tray and yeah. it looked like his hand was going in both directions underneath. I mean, you could oh, tell which, no. which, which was in an index finger and what was a thumb, you know, and I thought to myself, you know, this is a great start. It just needs an artist to come in and fix the mistakes, you know, before it was ready to be printed out in vinyl, like 16 inches wide or 16 feet wide. I mean, it was massive. So, um, yeah, there's some, there's some weirdness sometimes to AI art, but nothing that can't be, um, manipulated and fixed a little bit. Those sometimes those, uh, just, just getting our hands involved can, uh, raise that quality a little bit. And I have seen some pretty good quality stuff out there. I don't know if it is, uh, just generated from prompts or if artists are making it, but, um, there's compositional rules in the program. Uh, but composition still king, so still all right. Takes a, still takes an artist's eye to identify whether it's whether it's good or not. So I'm going to start adding some of these lighter values, paying attention to the curvature of the body of the shark. And again, this is going to still look rough until we start blending. So just getting, just get some of those. Lighter values in place. Now, right this now. artigan paper, yeah. it doesn't have a visible tooth, but we can see it in the marks. Well, yeah, because the applications that I'm making are soft, mm -hmm. and charcoal is a softer me medium. And the, but yeah, the the tooth is not real heavy with this paper. This is one of the reasons why I like it. It's, yeah. So when Matt blends with it, he'll be able to get smooth gradations yes. out of there. Yeah. So That's we're just cool. getting we're just getting material in place right now. Now you can create a uh, white charcoal drawing and not blend, mm -hmm. but typically, if you're going to have uh, kind of fine details. You need to make the drawing a little bit bigger. <laughs> um, so since this is a small drawing, we're kind of forced to do some blending, but that is that is perfect for this subject anyway. Um, so if you wanted to not blend with a blending stump or a blending tool, you could definitely do that, but I, you're not going to get probably the look that you want with without working larger in that case. And let's see, there's a little bit of light value out here. And we'll just put a little extra charcoal down here at the bottom because there's a, uh, at the bottom of the mouth because there's a little bit of a grayish area right there. Now, all of what I'm doing right here is going to make sense in just a minute. Mm -hmm. And some of those really dark gray areas, you'll find those with the stump. Do you plan on kind of dragging that? Material around and drawing a little bit, painting with it for, for sure. Um, so this is this is kind of I mean, oh, this step is kind of like a it's a rough sketch. It's a basically a rough sketch, but it's getting the material on the surface. It's kind of like if you're creating an oil painting and you're just getting blocking in colors okay. in preparation for blending the colors. That's a good way to think of it, actually. That I understand. Yes. Yes. When we block our colors in, we try to block them in as fast as we can and uh, not worry too much about refinement, just getting the cut, the surface covered. Then we can slow down and work with all that wet paint. And I have not looked at the time thus far. Oh, not bad. Okay. You, know, you got it. You're doing well. All right. Now we're going to switch to the blending stomp. And I'm just going to start right up here with the water and uh, you can see when I start pulling this it's going to soften it we still want to have some hard contrast up here 
Uh, but we can, like Ashley mentioned, I would, we can pull some of the colors out. You see that up there in the corner? Mm hmm or the colors out. We could pull some of the values, the values out and we can pull some of the charcoal out and create some lighter gray areas. And then of course we've got our eraser as well to follow. And especially in this water area, I really want to work the application so it's as smooth as possible in these light rays. At the top of the show, you were going over your erasers, and yeah. I was—I promise I was paying attention. Yeah. But uh, did you say you were going to use a kneaded eraser in here, any? I am not using a kneaded I did, eraser. I, I didn't remember seeing a kneaded eraser. Shockingly. Mm-hmm. My favorite eraser is not being used in this drawing. It's just this, the drawing's too small. Yeah. To really be able to do much with it. Yeah. And sometimes I try to shape my kneaded eraser into a point or an edge, but they're just so soft. They don't hold up. It just squishes right back down. And this is an interesting piece because of the foreshortening. I mean, I'm looking at it and, it and measuring off the screen, and it looks like the mouth, you know, the corner of the mouth extends so far back. It's almost almost half the width of the body. Yeah, it is. It is. A, a, you can't draw this the way you think it should look. Mm -mm. You, you have to really pay attention there. But I love what it because it showcases the mouth, you know. And uh, it's kind of the business end of a great white shark. I would say so. And for those of you who uh, who are scared of the spiders and stuff, and I think we were joking about that last week, about don't want to draw spiders because they're scared, or of the spiders maybe. I, listen, I am terrified of sharks. I, I, am, I like to surf, and... Uh, Every time, I mean, sharks, I am constantly thinking about sharks mm -hmm. when I'm out there. Uh, usually the first five minutes I'm out there, I am like, just keep, I keep telling myself, it's okay. It's okay. You're going to be okay. Self -talk. Right. Um, and then, you know, after about 15 minutes, I kind of stopped thinking about it so much, but you see so much stuff out there floating in the water on your board, you know? And there's times when you're out there in the water, I've been out there in the water a few times where, uh, you know, it might've just rained or it's, it's kind of rainy and uh, maybe it's the afternoon and the water is just black, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, there might be good waves, but the water is black. You sometimes see like a school of fish jumping out. Oh, you see all kinds right. of that stuff. That always freaks me out. I'm like, there's it, something down there. But when the water's black, you don't see anything. And especially, you know, uh, sometimes the best... Uh, the best times to surf are when, you know, the, the water is calm, but you have some good waves come through and they're very defined waves. But when you're sitting out there really far off from the shore and uh, you're, the water is not moving and you're just waiting for the next wave, and you think about the sharks. Yeah, it's a little eerie. You think about the sharks. Um, so I'm, the reason why I said that is for those of you who don't want to draw spiders because you're scared of spiders. Well, I'm drawing something that I'm terrified of. <laughs> you're and, facing your fear. And even though... This, uh, isn't a, this isn't a regular episode of Getting Sketchy. This is a therapy for me. This is therapy, right. <laughs> uh, um, and even though I'm terrified of, of sharks, I do think they're beautiful creatures and just so cool to draw, too. Mm, my favorite's the bull shark. Oh, no way. That's the most terrifying of all. You think so? Yeah, because they, they eat anything. They're the ones that are most likely... Oh, uh, bull sharks that. are that. very more likely like to mu attack. I like how muscular they look. Yeah, they're, they're scary. Like, they're like the pit bull of the shark world. And, uh, you know, there was a couple of years ago, there were two shark attacks 
in, I think, the same day or within the same week at the beach I go to. And uh, one person lost an arm. The other person just got nicked. But uh, in both situations, they think it was a bull shark. How about that? Because those bull sharks will, they'll just, you know, thrash around and eat whatever. They'll just bite whatever and figure out what it is by the way it tastes. Right. <laughs> and if they bite your arm and it's gone, uh, well, they'll just spit it out and just move on. Move on to the next arm they're going to take off. <laughs> You know, the shark that I think is terrifying to see, and of course, I don't think people see them. I think they're very deep. But there's the uh, the goblin shark. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. You know, they open their mouth, and then another mouth comes out. It's a little bit like the, uh, like the alien of sharks. I think I got that right, the name of the shark. Yeah, I think I've heard of that before. Mm -hmm. They're stay at the bottom of the ocean, maybe. Yeah, pretty creepy. All right, well, look how all that light is softening now, and the light rays act as uh, directionals. They, they they lead our eye down to the shark. That that big forward fin that's close to us, coming out of the bottom left corner, acts as a directional, like an arrow that leads us back towards the shark and sort of the focal point of the mouth. The mouth is about a third of the way up and about a third of the way from the right. So all those elements are working together to create a little bit of movement and, uh, and control and direct our eyes to the finest little details, those sharp teeth. Yeah, we're getting closer. I'm gonna have to make that hind tail a little bit larger, I think. And uh, once we start erasing out, so, we're adding the white charcoal, but then we're going to go back and erase out some more of the darker areas. So there's going to, there's more white charcoal <laughs> uh, on the surface in the background that's going to be there when we're finished. I don't know if we've got too many shark fears in the audience, Matt. Brent Does Art says he loves Shark Week. Uh, Francis Rose loved the Sharknado series, and Buddy used to snorkel with reef sharks. All right. She says they won't harm you normally unless you, unless you disturb them. Yeah, unless you're me. <laughs> <laughs> unless you ride over their uh, dorsal fin with a surfboard. Then they're, then, then they're on you. Yeah, and Jen looked up the goblin shark. The goblin shark. Isn't that, a cr isn't that crazy, Jen? To believe something like that even exists. All right, so the outside of this fin is defined by the light areas around it. So we yeah, got to have a little bit nice. of light value it's down there. It's not here. even really there. I mean, it's almost totally black. Maybe there's a little dot at the bottom of it. But like sculpting, it feels like when you're working on black paper, it feels like you're carving or sculpting your drawing. All right, let's go into the shark now, and we'll do some blending, and then after that, we'll do some erasing, and then we'll... Go back with the white charcoal and refine things, and then we'll be finished. That is the plan. So when I go back over the top here, you can see that it, it softens the application, and it makes those highlights less intense. But more importantly, it uh, changes the texture, makes it look more like smooth shark skin. Mm -hmm. So... You got to go through that stage there where it looks like you're drawn with sidewalk chalk <laughs> on your driveway there for a little while. And then refine. And of course, you can vary the amount of pressure that you put on the blending stop to affect the intensity of how much you're blending. Pick 
Peggy, I see your comment. Matt's doing the drawing tonight, and we're glad you made it. We're glad you're here. He's drawn with white charcoal on black artigan paper. I was worried she wasn't going to make it when the show started, but we, we were going to wait. We're now. <laughs> we're glad she's here. We're we're all ready now. We're all good to go. All right, start over. <laughs> I don't think I have enough time to start over. <laughs> you actually, you I have still a, have about half your time. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, that's another thing about charcoal that people tend to overlook, maybe, but it's fast. You can go quickly with it. You can create a full range of value pretty quickly. With charcoal, even if you're using, you know, white charcoal and black paper, especially if you're using white charcoal and black paper. Yeah, and charcoal comes in different, so many different forms. You can work small like this with a pencil, or you can work larger with sticks. And uh, you can get white charcoal in sticks too. And it's a little, probably a little less common, but you can get them in. Oh, I've small, got some over uh, here. But... Rectangular sticks and cover lots of space fast, just like you can with regular, with the real deal with a black charcoal. Uh, Enrique, yes, you can use black mitants paper for this drawing. I would probably, in this case, I would probably, for this subject, use the less rough side. Oh, no kidding. Do not use, yeah, it's... And maybe draw a little bigger than this. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge on the mitants paper, um, just because even the less textured side of the paper is um, real, still pretty heavily textured. Yeah, compared to the art again. So let's see, Matt's is... Almost seven inches by like four and a half inches. So if you were to double that, you know, and of course your drawing would would be four times larger if you double those dimensions. That would reduce, um, you know, seem to reduce the degree of uh, texture in your drawing. You know, make the texture seem smaller by comparison to the size. So you could do that. You go a little bigger, and and actually. Um, you know, we work small because of the time constraints. It doesn't make it any easier to draw. It's just less space to cover. But uh, I think this would be a great drawing to do a little bit bigger. You could really get into the details of the teeth and the light on our shark's back. There's some pretty small, thin rays of light. So, um, I Yep. I, I do want to caution you, though, mm. that that paper is very heavily textured. And... The the smoothing that I'm doing right here, it it you're not going to get the same effect mm -hmm. on that paper. So you definitely would have to work larger, and um, and it would look it would look a little different. Yeah, be okay with the textural differences. So, you know, now I've moved white charcoal too much. I'm going to be erasing out uh, quite a bit of of dark areas here, but. That's fine. We can work this back and forth. In fact, that's the whole point. Tim Smith wonders, what is the practical application difference between a stump and a tortillion? Well, we use them for the same thing, honestly. Yeah. The, the stumps will last longer because you, cause they're, but they're more durable because they're not hollow. Um, but... Uh, and you need to, sh to you need to resharpen them or clean them off. That's how they can last longer. So you can really clean them off on a sandpaper pad. One thing though is that um, that you can also kind of damage them a little bit with the sandpaper pads too. Uh, when I clean them off, you know, I, I I clean them off all the way around. Try to keep the stump this the stumps angled to the pad, the sandpaper pad, um, the same as its initial angle. But sometimes it's hard to get it to go. To a really sharp point when you're trying to reshape or clean off a stump and the tip will get kind of fuzzy and and dull so uh, there's a little art to that I, I finish off my stump cleaning with long strokes dragging away from the direction that the stump is pointing but t theoretically you know they last a lot longer and they're probably a little bit more expensive but neither are very expensive so i think of tortillions as more disposable than stumps, but we use them for the same thing. And I personally typically like using or tortillion over a blending stump 
uh, I feel like they have a little bit more precision. They have like a to longer a, point, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I'm using a stump here because all blending tortillas are dirty. <laughs> See, this one's dirty. Yeah, you can't uh, introduce that graphite in can't there. can't use that there. All right, so now it's time for some erasing. And I'm going to start in the eye because um, that is a dark area. We need to make this shark look like he's sweet but also evil. Rama Salami asks, would pastels be better a better route on that larger, more toothy paper? Probably so, just because um, yes. they're going to build up more and, yeah. and, and, and fill in some of that tooth. You know, the soft pastel will. Yes, for sure. That's a good call. Mm -hmm. So I'm using the Tombow eraser now. And we're going to start putting some details in here, like a little wrinkly nose up here and there's a nostril crazy looking nostril right here we don't have to draw all the details we just kind of have to get the shape of the value kind of close to being accurate and then our mind will put in the rest of the information So I can lightly erase, just take a little bit of information or a little bit of white charcoal off. All right. And then we can extend down the side of his mouth right here. So now it's like Matt's drawing. With yeah, the, it's like a you know, he's drawing just, with an eraser. He's making them dark marks, but making them through the white charcoal. So he's going to switch back into his adding darks gear in his brain. Mike C, I see your question. So on a paper blending stump, do you clean it or peel off the used paper end? You clean it. If you start peeling it, and sometimes they do come loose and just unravel, um, you're really just peeling off the paper that's around the smooth barrel or the part that you actually hold. And uh, you won't get down to the dirty part until your stump's all gone. You'll have to, you have to peel, unpeel the whole thing. So you use sandpaper. And, uh, and rub it back and forth while you roll it in your fingers um, to clean all the way around and make a nice fresh spot to smudge with. Okay, you see I'm going up in the water again too here and now years ago, out some areas. Before um, I used stumps when I was growing up and I just didn't, you know, we didn't have Amazon and, and uh, I didn't have uh, art stores I could go to as easily or needed somebody to take me because I'm talking about when I was a kid and didn't have a driver's license, I would uh, smudge with a paper, paper football. So for those of you that played paper football growing up, you know, just fold one of those up pretty, pretty, pretty tight with a relatively soft paper, like drawing paper works well. And then you have three corners that you can smudge and blend precisely with. We'll go ahead and do some more work back here in the water and then go back to finishing the shark. All right. You looking good? You got 13 minutes and a half, 13 and a half. Still got, we still have to race out in the shark and then add some more white charcoal. Mike, I'm trying to guess the sandpaper grit. Um, you know, these are, these, sometimes you can get stumps and they come with a sandpaper pad. Um, so when you, when one, I mean, they're really just little slips of sandpaper, like three inches by one inches stapled on top of one another. And you just peel one off and throw it away when it gets dirty. And I don't think the grit is written on the back, but I'm guessing it's about 250, about 250 grit. Kind of a medium grit. Darren Kane says Q-tips were often my go-to blender. Yes, yes, Q-tips are great for lots of lots of things in art making. Brent does art says I've seen an artist use a dried tree limb as a blender. 
I guess so. You know, paper is wood. <laughs> it's getting desperate. Right. I might even I might even <laughs> use my fingers if I had to do that. I might even get my fingers in there. Usually a no no for me, except with oil paint and oil pastels. I like to use my fingers for those two meetings. Yeah, I like to use my fingers with uh, pastels. Pastel, yeah, you yeah, can use them with pastel pastels, too. Yeah. All right, well, what a difference some blending makes, you know, from those rougher marks with all the black speckles showing through um, to, to what we're, Matt is arriving at now. Smooth gradations that transition out to black. Just kind of pushing and pushing and pulling. Let's do a little clean up here. Now, right now, this shark looks, he looks very old. He doesn't have his dentures in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to add the teeth. And that'll be one of the last things we do. Catherine just said that. He looks like a grandpa shark. Yeah. Grandpa shark. Do, 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 do. Grandpa shark. Do, 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 do. <laughs> or baby grandpa. Uh, baby I don't think. Grandpa. I think That's it's like a Benjamin Button. He was well, you know, grandpa baby. shark is one of the lines. In the, oh, is it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you obviously haven't heard the shark song. I used to. I mean, it, I, I only heard it when I would watch baseball. It starts with <laughs> baseball. Yeah, it was somebody's walkout music. I can't remember who it was now. It escapes me. Um, Gosh, I have to look it up. It was about three years ago, I guess. Maybe more. I lose track of time. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it starts with Baby Shark, and then it goes oh, okay. to, like, Mama Shark, and then Daddy Shark, ah. and then Grandpa Shark. It never ends. All right, we're going to make this tail fin a little bit larger. Uh, Greek veteran, I see your question there about finding the reference. Matt, do you, what is it? You, you scroll down and click on your face to find the reference? Yeah, you have to go to the YouTube channel. So you can start by clicking on my face underneath this video. That will take you to the YouTube channel. Then... Look for the community tab there, and uh, you'll see the top post is the reference photo for this lesson with a link back to this lesson. So you can go get it and come right back. There you go. I kind of feel like I have a lot of time, but I d don't. I have eight minutes. I have done what I normally do here. <laughs> I work along and think I've got plenty of time. I can really slow down now. And, then and like I can't. Up. I can't slow down here. Uh, I see a problem, but I'm going to fix it. So my problem is... This is too low. This needs to be higher up, but we can't fix that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the back of the tail like this. And that should look pretty natural. There you go. That looks a lot more natural. And let's just cut off a little bit of that. Doing a little carving. Go. That looks all right. Right. Let's go into the shark now. And there's lines of varying degrees going up here. Mm 
And then we'll add the gills here. Oh, he's looking scary, isn't he? Starting to look a little scary. So I am thinking about the darker values now, even though I'm using an eraser. I'm just pulling them right out. A little texture in there. And right along the brow line. Take a little bit more out there. That'll make him look yeah, more that's sinister. Part of, that's part of his sinister look. Yeah. Right up to the nose makes here. He looks serious now. He takes his job seriously. Gave him, a, gave him a glare. Oh, I would not like to see this underwater. I would not like to see it. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go back with the white charcoal and add some finishing touches. We're going to start on the shark here. A pretty strong highlight right here. And now for these applications, I'm going to let them sit on the surface. Stay nice and, and crisp and, and super white. Because smudging does bring the value down a little bit. Now I'm doing this quickly. You can take your time and really refine this drawing if you want. So what I mean by that is you can put some of this these strong applications down and do a light blend and then go back over the top of them again with another light blend and then get the same smooth texture. If you wish. We like seeing the white whites go in. Really pumps up the value range. Yeah, it definitely makes it more of a full range. And it and it makes it look like there's actual light coming down there, you know? Yeah. But he says, Matt, would a white gel pen or gouache work along with the charcoal for the highlight? Um, yeah, it would definitely add some strong highlights, but it, the texture would be different. And uh, I would probably suggest just sticking with a white charcoal pencil. Since the white charcoal pencil does go all the way to white, different than like a colored pencil on a black surface, and you can sharpen it and be precise with it, uh, I don't see a, really a need for the gouache. And Matt and I both love using gouache for white highlights anytime we can. Uh, but then also, this is a strange medium. You know, it's a dusty medium, not like putting um, painted highlights over marker or colored pencil um, that stays in place a little bit better. So, yeah, and I, don't I think mean, I'd choose the, the gouache. If you've done your whole drawing in white charcoal, there's no real reason to switch to a different medium. But good question. Those are two great media for um, kind of kind of working in some mixed media highlights at the end of the drawing process. All right, we're about to be ready to add the teeth. All right, we've all been anticipating and anxiously awaiting teeth. 
Well, I it's hope like you're not disappointed because they're last. it's kind of like just a suggestion of teeth, you right? Know? Right. It's a small drawing, <laughs> but that, that's how it looks in the reference too. They're just like little, yeah, yeah, little yeah. dots of teeth, just enough to scare us. Mike C says, "Could you also use a pastel pencil?" Yes, I think you could use a pastel pencil. Uh, Peggy, to answer your question is almost. This is the last in the series of um, this oh. is the last drawing in this season. But I we do have our fans. review show, and that's when we look at the ten drawings that we made and talk about them. What what we like, what we didn't, what we might would do different or not, and uh, and that's coming up in two weeks because we will be off air next week, next Wednesday. So. Um, guests can just find a chat box together and talk for about an hour next Wednesday. And no, I'm kidding. Make a drawing instead. Make your own drawing. And then in the same time that you would do one maybe with Matt or I. And then we'll see you back here on the 10th of April for our review and wrap-up show. 42 seconds left, huh? Mm. 42 seconds, 42 teeth go. <laughs> Add those teeth. <laughs> All right, so this little gray area right here. Well, I need to erase a little bit more here. Let's go a little bit underneath here. There we go. That's a little more. Oh like yeah, it. that was good. Then that yeah. little highlight out down there. Um, All right, now I'm just going to pull a few marks up and and a few marks down, and that's going to be about as simple as it gets there. They got to look kind of jagged, so I have a couple of teeth kind of fall in the wrong direction. Which for a shark, I guess, would be the right direction. All right, let's go with the top teeth, which they're barely visible. Well, Patricia says, great job, Matt. But he says this shark looks very vivid. And and also adds, don't forget to like. Don't forget to what? Don't forget to like. Oh yeah, don't forget to like. Don't forget that part. Sonia asks why we don't sign our artwork. Well, that's a good question. Um I don't really yeah, sign I don't, I don't even like signing my artwork. Yeah, I don't I don't really sign a piece of artwork unless it has some type of uh kind of connection to me whether I'm you know if I if I feel exceptionally proud of a piece of artwork I'll mm -hmm. sign it. Um or if I, I had sign some a piece kind of, of us when I was going to sell it I would go ahead and sign it. But oh, a yeah. lot of times I didn't sign it until Someone had chosen to purchase it. And then I would, in fact, I've actually driven to a gallery before and painted my signature on paintings that were on the wall because I didn't sign them when I made them. And I, just, I don't think about it personally, and I struggle with finding just the right place to sign it that doesn't disturb the balance of my artwork. You know, it's not part of the scene, so I kind of like to sneak it in somewhere. I, I will sign artworks if I've had some type of breakthrough in a piece. Um, if I'm selling a, a piece of artwork, which I haven't done for years, uh, cause I had no need to, um, I would always sign those for sure. So Matt doesn't <laughs> sign us cause he knows who made it. I know who made it. The, the owner knows who made it. <laughs> he did. Um, no, but, uh, I, I'll sign some works that, you know, just kind of stay here in the studio. If there are, uh, if, if there's some special reason to me for to sign it. Yeah, and you've got some pieces you're proud of that you've framed and are on display, you know? Yes. You've signed those. Yes, I, I will sign works that I'm especially happy about. Uh, but for the most part, like little sketches like this, I would, there's no, I would never sign something <laughs> like this. <laughs> Not that I don't want to put my name to it. I mean, I'm I'm broadcasting live to the universe. Right. Your name uh, is I'm definitely connected to this uh, chart drawing. But um, but yeah, I 
Oh, you those know, are some scary teeth, Matt. A signature is not necessarily the the most important piece of the art for me. So, uh, yeah, but I think I made. You know, there's some there's some issues here. I think the, uh, I think this shark is probably a cousin of the shark in the reference, <laughs> but close enough. Like his eyes in a little bit of a different place. You can see foreshortening is a little bit different and. Back there on that tail, you can see that if you look at the reference, the tail actually, I didn't, I either I didn't make this angle, that's what I did. I didn't make this angle as severe enough. Yeah. So it ended up being straighter, which made that tail fin look weird. But instead of going back and starting over <laughs> and trying to fix that, um, I was able to fix it and make it look natural by just having an understanding of what happens back there. Yeah, and it so. created a little bit of empty or a negative shape in there. And uh, I can't remember who it was, but uh, one of our friends in the chat mentioned they actually liked the way you drew, you ended up drawing the tail. It does give us a little bit better understanding of the shape of a of a shark. It actually looks like it has more depth. Yeah, uh, it really pinches from, it goes from really big to small, and we can see that because the fin's not in the way of the lower contour now of the tail. So uh, if you're going to have a happy accident, I think you had one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would have, if I would have left it, it would have been an unhappy accident, but by noticing it and then making an alteration, it was a happy, adjustment. Made it a happy, a happy adjustment. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to call this uh finished, but Oh, I see Sonia gave us ah. a super chat. So, Thank you so I got much, a, Sonia. Thank you for your support. <laughs> Give her the the too long cheer there. Thank you for that, Sonia. We appreciate it. And that was just a super chat with no comment or question. But yeah. Or we'd, we'd read it for you. Um, oh, yeah. I like that idea, Brazen Hearted. Uh, maybe you could save these less than stellar pieces for some sort of fundraiser, sale, or auction. Pretty good calls like inner city art programs or something once every so often. That's a good idea. Um, that's that sounds great. If you want to organize that for me, brazen hearted, <laughs> and do that, I would love to do that. It's just you know, finding time to manage a pretty large website um, and still make art, still make videos, still make ebooks, and. Uh, deal with customers and all the things that I have to do. It's I would there's tons of things I want to do, but uh, another idea I had was just to give these away, um, and maybe we'll do that next season. We'll yeah. see. It's a giveaway. Um, and occasionally Ashley and I will do a test drawing too, so we could give the test drawing away too, mm -hmm. possibly. You know, we don't do that every time, but we no. do it sometimes, and. Uh, and I suggest for people to do that, to draw the same subject more than once, just like musicians practice their own songs more than once. Uh, maybe we should show some of our test drawings, do a little comparison occasionally. Well, I have, I did do a test drawing for this, but it's not in front of me. I, that's one of the things that I do with my test oh, drawings. Oh, yeah, I don't like to look at I them. don't look at them when I'm creating the finished piece. And it, it's actually behind you, Ashley, right. over there. A lot of times our test drawings are to test the material on the paper. You Why don't you go that? grab okay, it? Okay, and then it. we'll compare them and while since I we're talking about that, this. You can tell everybody a joke. Okay. Oh, you put me on the spot here. And I know all kinds of jokes. Okay. What do you call a? No, I can't do that. Matt one. does this. To I me can't all do the that time. one. I got a great one, but I can't do it. Oh, oh no! Because it's not getting sketchy appropriate. It's not appropriate. Okay, so this is the one that we did live, obviously, and this is the one I did for my test. So different. Same artist. Yeah. Same Similar, subject, not exactly same the subject. same shark. Yeah. yeah. Every so, drawing is its own experience. So it's interesting the way these two turned out. Um, I actually like my second one better. I think I do too. Yeah. I, I think, and that's usually the way it turns out when I do a test drawing, even though I, I could not see this, this was on the other side of the studio, but sometimes we test to just make sure that what we're doing is going to fit in the 45 minute That's time right. zone. Yeah. And sometimes I won't even finish the test. I'll just see how far I get in 25 minutes and then I know I'm going to make it or not. Yeah. I, I do the same thing yeah. sometimes. Um, 
And sometimes I, I, I have a pretty good idea that I'm going to be able to finish it inside of the time limit. And then I don't even do a practice sketch because sometimes doing a practice sketch, you start remembering what you did before mm -hmm. and it can not be good. But that's why I take the practice sketch and move it. This is the practice. Yeah, sketch. You don't again. want to interrupt your current creative flow. Right. You want to be in the moment. Um, yeah. Now for the live lessons, we don't do practice sketches because that would take all oh, of no. our life. Uh, if we need to make changes in the live <laughs> lessons, we just make them live, you know, yeah. and we've got, we've got the time and the flexibility to extend to the next week if we need to. So yeah, it, there's not a, such a strict time limit. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, let's wrap this up because we're going to go live again in That's 20 right. minutes from now. So we'll go ahead and switch over. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that uh, Sharktaculous, Tom. What about that word, Sharktaculous? Yeah, I'm going to use That's that. completely made up, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, tonight's uh, live broadcast. Remember, again, just a reminder, next week um, I'm going to be away. I'm not going to be uh, available to do the live shows next Wednesday night. So we'll continue the following week. The following week will be April 10th, and that will be the final episode of season 11. Yeah, the real season 11. Um, <laughs> and uh, then we'll take a few weeks off before we come back. Uh, but we'll continue to do the live lessons, not next Wednesday though, um, and uh, continue with that the following week as well. So um, I look forward to seeing you guys all for the review show. If you've never come to a review show or never watched one, um, it, it's easy for me to say that you are missing out, but it really is true. Critique is such an important part of learning and developing as an artist. And unfortunately, a lot of people believe, well, you got to be critiquing my art in order to gain from it. And that is the furthest thing from the truth. You learn from every critique, no matter what artist created it. And that's why in art studios and college programs, they have critiques at the end of projects and assignments and everybody's artwork is critiqued. Not for just the benefit of that artist that created it, but for the benefit of all of the art students that are in attendance because you you learn, you learn concepts. It's really like a cheat code. It really you know, is. You can learn so much more without having to go through and make 30 pieces of art just by looking at a classroom full of art. Right. So uh, you, you learn, you know, it's an efficient way to learn. Right. The so, critique process. So don't miss the review show. And also, if you're a member and you haven't watched any of the members' minutes, the members' minutes are critiques. Uh, then go to the website, go to community, the community tab, and click on uh, the members' minute. And uh, or, or it actually says critique, I think, in the menu. And watch some of those critiques because you will learn from the critiques that uh, of artworks that other people have sent in, and it will make your art better. Uh, so anyway, uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, Ashley, have anything else? Uh, I saw Brayson Hearted's joke about FedEx and UPS. I'm going to use that one. That's a good one. Very funny. And otherwise, you know, have a happy Easter. Absolutely. And we'll see you in two Wednesdays. Yep. Yep. I hope everybody has a wonderful Easter. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me of that. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off of this show. Uh, good night, everybody. <laughs>